Welcome back to the instancing course. Fourth tutorial already. You grow up so fast. You've learned how to create, read and write collections. So now it's time to play with them and manipulate them in interesting ways. Because the possibilities are endless with collections and really depend on your personal needs, I'll simply go through the notes that can manipulate collections in meaningful ways. First up is the insert node. The insert node allows you to insert one collection into another collection at a given index. The collections do not have to be the same size. Here we have one of my personal favorites, the expand node. The expand node expands your collection to the required size. The expanded values either wrap, ping pong or clamp. Simply set the amount of expansion in the inspector. This is also where you can change the wrapping mode. The expand node is a nice way to make a pattern like this linear node repeat but in reverse. This also works great with the gradient palette node as demonstrated here. The reverse node reverses the collection, shortest node explanation ever, moving on. The shift node shifts the values to adjacent indices. This is useful when you need to move all the values in a collection up or down an index or two. That being said, this is really one of those you'll use it when you need it node. All right, in this patch along, I'm going to show you how you can use the expand node to mirror a pattern. Uh, I'll start with some shapes. Let's just use a simple circle. I'll create a linear node. And we're going to expand this. This will be our Y coordinates. Let's bump this up to 40. Packing it together, like I said, Y coordinates. And then another linear node to distribute the circles over the X axis. Like that. And then we can add a move node to move our circles around, right? So if we would have just one linear node, uh, oh, I did something wrong. I should start with just 10 and should expand it to 40. That was the whole point of this demo. You get it like this. So now we want to do some mirroring on it. We can use the ping pong wrapping on the expand node to mirror the pattern. As you can see, it's a bit too deep. So we could do like 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5. And this way we mirror the pattern. Uh, a cool thing you could add to this is the curve node. Let's add that right here. Put the curve node in between. Uh, make sure that the minimax of both nodes match. And now we can use some funky algorithms in the curve node to create some cool, cool shapes and they get mirrored. So just a quick demo how you could, uh, can use the expand node to mirror a pattern. All right, in this patch along, I'll show you how to create more complex gradients as, pro as I did promise in the first tutorial. Uh, so we'll start with the gradient palette. Um, and eventually we want to render this to a texture. That's what we will always do at a patch size. So this is basically taking the gradient and creating a texture at the size of the uh, patch. Now we learned about a couple of interesting nodes that uh, we can use for this. We could use a second gradient. Let's give this a different colors. And use the insert node. This way I can insert one gradient after the other. Could even move it around with the index slider. So that's a nice little trick you can do. Uh, also, of course, we have the expand node that you could use. 
so we could expand it and then again ping pong it and let's say we want to do it uh, twice or 40 80 60 you can go get some um interesting gradients that you cannot pull off with the regular gradient node um, so that's a cool little trick for complex gradients in this example i'll use the shift nodes to move the gradient around so first off start with the gradient palette again then i want to shift the palette around create a texture out of it let's lock that and give it the input size of the patch now if we rotate this we can scroll through the pattern or through the gradient sorry now we can animate that with a simple saw node take the size of the gradient as an amplitude and move this around this could be a union polar um, the issue is it's very choppy right now so we can fix that by using smooth node very simple trick to create a moving gradient right and of course you could use this for example let's say we have a circle you could multiply the output and have a circle that is moving in color right so we start with a shape it will get translated into a texture over here and then the white of the render gets multiplied with the texture giving you this effect all right that's it that was it for this tutorial as wire evolves and grows, more nodes will be added that manipulate collections. When that happens, we'll make follow-up videos to this one. As for your homework, I want you to take a look at the loopy and line trails examples and try to replicate them yourself. Then make modifications using your new and awesome collection skills. When you're done, you can move on to the next tutorial where we'll revisit math and logic with instancing.